Got a little module from IC Station to show you guys today. This one came as a request from a viewer that uh, was requesting that I review this one. So here it is. It's an AC to dual voltage DC converter module. Let's check it out. Here we go again. This one came from Canada Post and of course it uh, was not left. It was not put through the mail slot. I had to go pick this one up at the post office which defies all logic because of course they have no problem leaving a big box but something that can fit through the mail slot I have to sign for it and it's a um, module at least, the, at least the suppliers are starting to uh, uh, ship stuff out signature required for even small things like this because of, of how many things have been stolen camera seems to be having a problem focusing these days doesn't it anyway this is a module I got this from IC station it's a the camera does seem to be having a problem today doesn't it it seems like it's thought I was going blind there but it's like my camera is shaking Looks like I'll have to get a new camera one of these days. Uh, this is a module. It uh, accepts anywhere from 65 to 260 volts AC input and provides DC 5 and 12 volts output to the output terminals. We're going to connect this up. We're going to test it. This came from IC Station. Link to this product is on the page. So I'm just going to prep my power supply. I'm just going to use my good old cheater cord here to connect power. And yes, I will put some insulation on here. This is the AC input wires here. So I'm just going to connect that. Maybe I'll solder wires right on from another cord as this one here. These clips appear to be needing some attention. They are not going to clip on there very good. Let me just grab another cord and we'll prep this properly. I'm just going to uh, tin the end of my, this tip needs to be replaced at some point. This tip has been on the iron for well over a year. So I'm just going to tin a power cord. And we'll tin the input pins. Now normally on your project you'd be putting this on a circuit board, but I'm only going to be demo demoing this unit to show how it works and what we can draw through it. What it is is it's a it's a complete this is a complete inverter. And we'll go over the, uh, the circuitry on this momentarily. Once I've got it connected here, we can demonstrate how it operates and how the voltage is on it, how accurate the voltage regulation is. It should be very accurate. I'm just going to put a couple pieces of heat shrink tubing over here just to prevent any accidents. Heat shrink tubing has a very short lifespan around my shop because this will only be here until the next time I need this cord for something. Okay, so we've got our our power input still going to be obviously live back here so I'm going to keep my fingers away when I've got it powered up but let's take a look at the board here and what the board has got on it first of all we've got some good isolation it looks to be between the primary and the secondary side if we get a close-up view here of the module so this is the AC side and as you can see there's a good there's several several millimeters it looks like there's about 10 millimeters of space between the contacts this is the width of the transformer and as you can see uh, there's nothing in this dead space here right they've even got a cutaway down over on the on this side of the board to provide even more isolation because there's a a capacitor is mounted close to the edge here so they've put a cutaway through here to give even more isolation between the AC line powered side and the isolated DC side because this of course has a transformer in it and we've got an optocoupler in here, which is right here. These are the pins for the optocoupler. Uh, they are right up top here. So there is an optical coupler between the two sides. 
And what that does is this provides a feedback loop for the voltage. So as the voltage is being rectified on the uh, DC side of the transformer, a sample of that is taken and it is used uh, to turn on the LED that's inside the optocoupler, which provides feedback over to the oscillator circuit, which is on this side. Here's the IC over here that controls the, uh, the frequency going into the transformer. There'll also be a, there's a MOS, should be a MOSFET on the top here somewhere. Uh, where is it? It might even be built into this thing. Got a rectifier down here. And where is the MOSFET? Might even be built into this IC here, the control IC, because this is a low power unit, but uh, drives the transformer take your uh, AC input which is of course rectified to, to high voltage DC that's why this has a this capacitor has got a rating of probably 450 yes 6.8 microfarad 450 volts this is the primary filter um, the high frequency generated in the oscillator circuit here pass through the transformer step it down to 5 and 12 volt supplies uh, a sample of that is taken and used as a reference to control the brightness of the LED inside the optocoupler and basically how it works is that as the voltage goes up the LED will get brighter as the LED gets brighter it will cause the phototransistor on the other side to conduct more which will in turn change the frequency of the oscillator which will change the efficiency of the transformer and cause the voltage to drop and as the voltage gets as the voltage drops the LED will become dimmer the uh, uh, conduction of the phototransistor on the other side of the optocoupler will go up or go down, I should say, the resistance will go up, the conduction will go down, which will, of course, cause the oscillator to change its frequency again to provide more power. That's, in a nutshell, how simple these things are. Let's get the meter out, let's plug it in, and see how effective this thing is, and then we'll try powering a few small things. This is very small current on this thing, so you're not going to you're not gonna power a lot of things up with it, but uh, certainly uh, it'll power up small devices that require... 12 or 5 volt supplies. Let's plug this in. I'm just going to grab my I'll grab my power plug here. Okay. And we'll turn on the meter. This video is not going to be a very long one because I'm just going to quickly demonstrate this. We should have power to this unit now. And let's just take a look and see what voltage we've got here. There's our 12 volt output, and these other two pins here will be the 5 volt output. So, so ground is side pin here on the pin number one is ground, and there's your plus 12 volts. And then on the other way, other side, the other side ground is this one here, and that's the 5 volt supply. Let's uh, see what we can power up with this. So I have here one of these relatively rare MP3 CD players. It's one of the first ones of the portable style that came out. This will run off of two batteries for a couple of hours. It also requires five volts as a, an adapter, which uh, I never got the adapter for it. But I mean, I could certainly make this work off of just a cell phone uh, power supply. I'm gonna use this little one here just for demonstration because it has both the five and the 12 volt output. So I've taken the 5 volt output from it and connected it up to the 5 volt input on the CD player. Power it up quite nicely. It's a, a low power device. I think the power says it'll dissipate 3 watts so you're not going to be powering a lot of uh, like you're going to be powering anything big with this. But if you've got a small project that you're building or something that you need a small dual power supply for, 12 and 5 volts, I think you can't go wrong with one of these little pre-made modules because it's got your dual voltages that you would require. It's easy to get use a cell phone adapter, for example, if you just need a 5 volt supply. And there's dime a dozen 12 volt supplies around that are much higher current. But if you're developing a small project and you need both 5 and 12 volts, something like this, might just do the trick. Anyway, I say there's not much to talk about on this thing. It's a module. Somebody wanted to see it demonstrated. There it is in operation. 
Now what I think I can probably do with this, because this player is never used ever as a, a uh, portable player, but it's nice to have to be able to play CDs that are in MP3 format, as I've, I've got a number of those. This is just small enough that I can tuck this right inside the cabinet and you'll never see it. So just before I wind this up, I figured I'd give you guys another good close-up look at the actual circuit itself. Here's your filters, your output filters and output choke, a rectifier diode, and the back side of the board. Here's the other diode, one for 12 volts and one for the 5 volt supply. This would be the reference for the uh, thing that's going to be the reference IC for the uh, feedback circuit, which is on the top side. But as you can see, everything looks to be nicely isolated. It's a very compact board, ready to build into your projects. That's it. Uh, link to this is in the description. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you again real soon. Bye for now.